Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Make With Tech channel, where we teach you how to innovate, create, and make things using desktop technologies. Today, we're going to solve a problem that I have. And the problem is that I have friends and neighbors that ask me, who would ever do the things that you teach people about on your channel? Why would you ever want to use a 3D printer or build some electronics or create something when you can go online and probably have it the next day? Well, the answer is twofold. The primary reason I create things is I love doing that. I find it an uplifting, invigorating activity. But the secondary reason is it's just practical and faster in certain cases. And the power of 3D printers consists of their ability to make bespoke items, custom unique items that maybe you can't get anywhere else and receive them very quickly. So let me tell you about two problems I have. I just bought a new vacuum for my woodworking shop. Now, you could have bought the same type of vacuum for your garage or maybe for your basement. It's one of these sort of industrial looking vacuums. This one happens to hang on the wall. I'll show you a picture of it here. The problem is that I have hoses like this in my shop that go to different pieces of equipment and I use them they're already sort of mounted on the wall. I use them to connect that equipment and I just switch which hose attaches to the vacuum in order to use it so that I don't get sawdust all over the house when I'm working in my shop. But my new vacuum uses hoses that are this size. So as you can see, this is not gonna work. Now, bigger vacuums often have bigger hoses. I really have a small shop, so this is gonna be fine. So I need a way to connect these together. Okay, so we're gonna solve that problem today with the 3D printer. Let me tell you about another problem. It has to do with hangers. So I'm a lucky guy. My daughter and son-in-law and their kids decided to remodel their house. So while they're remodeling their house, they're moving in my house with my wife and I. So the first thing we noticed is the front closet, because it's still cold here in the Midwest, is really full of coats. I'll show you a picture of that. And you'll notice many of these coats all look the same. So in the morning, you go to grab your coat to get in the car to go out, can't find your coat. You have to look through coat by coat by coat. So I needed a solution to that. I needed some way to label the coats, the hangers, in a way that would make it easy to find which code is yours. So two very practical problems. Each of them took me less than an hour to solve, including finding the thing to 3D print, modifying it so it fit my knees. So that meant I customized it because that's the unique capability of a 3D printer. And then printing it out. They're very quick prints and I happen to have a FL Sun Super Racer 3D printer. It's a big Delta printer that's really blindingly fast. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Okay, so let's look at the hose example first. So clearly I needed a coupler that went from one size to the other. Now, you might be able to get that at your local hardware store. I actually went to mine and they were out of all the sizes I needed. I might, could have probably ordered it online, but I really wanted to try, I wasn't sure it would exactly fit. So I decided to just 3D print one. This print took about a half hour. And as you can see here, it's a um, perfect fit. It fits on this side, nice and tight. And then on this side, I decided it'd be easier to go inside, but I could have designed it either way. Um, and that solves my problem. So how do I go about finding one of these? Well, let me show you how to find it. And more importantly, with just your browser, how to change the dimensions to exactly what you want. 
So we're gonna go to a website that I actually created that's part of the Make With Tech family called models.makewithtech.com. So let's head over to that website. And what Models does is it lets you search Thingiverse. If you find something that's exactly what you need, it provides a link so you can go to Thingiverse and download it from Thingiverse um, and support their ecosystem. But if you find something that you wanna customize, if that item has what's called an open SCAD file, it was designed in a particular program, then this site lets you customize it. Now in the past Thingiverse, yeah, I know, they have a customizer. Unfortunately, I have items that I've queued up to render to create in the Thingiverse customizer that are still sitting there a year later. Their customizer is broken. So I built one that works. So let's see how we do this. Well, I'm gonna go to the search box. And I'm gonna type in vacuum. And what that shows me in a more condensed display is a whole bunch of items that match vacuums. But you might say these are too small to see. Well, if I click on one of these pictures, I can see a big picture. Okay, so I find what I want. Maybe I select this one. Or better yet, let's go down here and let's start with this one. And you'll see there are three nozzles here. I can look at any of them up close. The actual part in a 3D viewer. And then if I want to use that part, I just go to the little T next to the part, I click on it, it'll take me to the Thingiverse page. Great, fine. Now, however, those aren't exactly what I wanted. I want a specific adapter. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna check this little box that says Open SCAD. And now we're looking for vacuum parts that are only parts that are customizable. So I'm gonna click on Vacuum Hose Adapter, and you'll see here there's no picture here, but I can click on the picture over here, and it looks like this allows me to create all sorts of adapters. So it's not one model, an STL file, it's hundreds of models. Let's see how you do that. Well, next to the model is this little three-dimensional box. I'm gonna click on that, and it's going to retrieve the open SCAD script. Now, what is an open SCAD script? Well, many 3D design programs are used on computers and you use your mouse and you manipulate things and you expand them, you contract them, you overlap them, you cut one from the other, you design things. But there's an alternative way to design things and that's using a recipe, a set of steps. And a step might be create a cylinder. Now, create a square and cut the square out of the cylinder. By doing that with a set of steps, steps are just called programs. So if we see the steps for this model, we'll see it's actually quite complex and you don't need to understand all this. I'm just giving you a little background here. So if I click on display code, here are the steps that are used to make really an infinite number of different nozzles. And you can see in here, um, there are individual steps, like this is a step that creates a cylinder. Now, I'm gonna close that and go over here and look at the parameters in the step. So these are variables. These are things the, the recipe knows how to use. So the large end, do I want to provide the measurements for the outside of the large end or the inside. Now, since I want the large end to go inside of my tube, I'm going to create the measurements for the outside. So the outside of this is the inside of this. I'm creating this. Well, I measured it before and I want it to be about 51 millimeters in here. Now you could just use a ruler or a caliper, but I measured it, I'm gonna make it 51. Now I can define the length here. I'll leave that at 15. Now for the small end, this is the end that's gonna fit to um, this item here. Now in this case, I want the pipe to go inside. So I want the inside dimension here. It's the outside of the pipe, the inside of here. So we're gonna say inside 
and I happen to know that's 41. And I'll make that end, let's say also 15, and then maybe I'll have 20 in the middle. The middle is this section here. And the rest of these don't really matter for what I'm doing. So I just defined how this program should create a custom pipe for me. So now I'm gonna queue it for rendering. Rendering being the process of turning it from a program into a three-dimensional object. I'm gonna click OK. If I go up to this little icon up here that shows the hourglass, I can see the things that I'm currently rendering. And it takes this system, oh, anywhere from two to three minutes, maybe a bit longer to create a model for you. The system's actually very robust. One of the problems with Thingiverse is every time a bunch of people used it, it broke. This system that I created, and it's completely free, everything I'm showing you here, can handle up to a thousand simultaneous object creations. So I'm using very large computers off in the cloud at Amazon AWS. Now when it's done, I can look over here and you can see there's some things already done. I'm gonna delete some of these that I no longer need. And um, we could look at any of those. But before we do that, let's look at the other problem. Now, to solve my hanger problem, I created a model for a little hanger tag. It's just a disc that goes over the hanger. It's really one cylinder with another cylinder that I made a hole and I put some type on it. It says Papa, which is what my grandchildren call me. I'm not recommending you get into the programming business, but I want you to understand what we've done here because my goal is to encourage thousands of people to be writing OpenSCAD, creating OpenSCAD models using models.makeotech.com to allow tens of thousands of people to easily use those models. And then we really expand the ecosystem. And this is all based on this open source computer-aided design environment called OpenSCAD, which is really wonderful. It's been around for a long time. I'm trying to help re-energize that community. And I'm gonna just upload this model to models.makewithtech.com because this environment works for both models off of Thingiverse and models you upload. So your friend or your colleague or somebody who's into programming could create a model for you and just email it to you and you could upload it and use it. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna look for this model. And let's see, it's called hanger tag. And I'm gonna open it up. Now, when models come from scripts, not from Thingiverse, you actually see the script right on the left-hand side. And you can see this is really pretty short. And the whole core of the model is I make a cylinder that's right here. Then I move over to the top. That's what this translate statement does. And I make another cylinder and I take the difference of the two. That means I cut one out of the other. So if this stuff on the left-hand side makes no sense to you, don't worry. You don't need to know that. All you need to do is get a script, a model from someone, upload it, then go here on the right-hand side and fill in what name you want, how high you want the text to be, and how big you want the tag to be, and say, Q for rendering. So if we go to our queue, we'll see that's now in the queue, but our vacuum adapter is not there anymore, so it's probably over here in results. These are some old tags that I made before, so I'm actually going to take and delete those. But let's look at this. I have three files here. The one that's most important is the STL file. That's what you download, you prepare for your 3D printer with a slicer and you print. We can see what that looks like right over here. And this is the custom nozzle adapter we just created. So anyone can search for a model, click that open SCAD box and create their own model. Now, if you wanna see how models adjusted the SCAD file, you can download that here. And if you wanna see if there were any errors or anything, you can actually look at the messages that were output by open SCAD. 
Now you're gonna get a bunch of warnings all the time. Don't worry about that, that doesn't matter. And you only need to really look here to see if something didn't work. And if you are a programmer, you can adjust it. And then on the bottom here, it shows you that we're running on almost the very latest version of OpenSCAD that's available. So what did we learn today? What we learned is anyone can use models.makewithtech.com to customize models. And there are thousands of thousands of them on Thingiverse. And if I'm successful, there'll be tens of thousands because we're gonna make it easy for people who wanna design models to distribute those models to solve regular problems around your home or office. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell so you're notified about new videos and go to models.makewithtech.com and you can sign up completely for free. Matter of fact, you can use it to search Thingiverse without even signing up. There's uh, no requirement for you to pay anything to use all of the features I talked about today. So thanks so much. Let's continue to learn together and have a great day.